a prehistoric analog of the hyenids, a prehistoric cousin, but just on a slightly different scale. This is Dino Crocuta gigantea. This is a real animal. This is a real creature that lived in the late Miocene. So there he is compared to a lion. And there he is compared to a polar bear. That is Dino Crocuta. Just to give you a size perspective. I'm about what, five foot five, a meter sixty-five centimeters? This thing probably stood around here on all fours, right around the same level as a grizzly bear. It is a pre-crocuted. It is, think about the evolutionary linear line of the hyenas, except before the ancestors of hyenas became hyenas. It is a beautiful example of a phenomenon called convergent evolution, wherein different taxa, different groups of animals, develop the same adaptations in order to do the same thing. This was an animal that was, that became durophagus, that became a thing that ate bones, that ate hard things. And behind it, there is, a, there is also the same similar evolutionary lineage that is very much in form and function the same in, and similar to the modern hyenas, except they were much older. They were a much older radiation of animals. And they gave rise to this beast. Now, the postcranial, the skeleton of this animal, is not very well known. It has been, it has been said that it was rather longer-legged and rangy versus other people's other suggestions that it's more with a round, stocky body and, and still efficient locomotion. And again, an adaptation for bone crunching, just like in all of the hyenas here, it had this bulbous, domed forehead that was that was pneumatized. It had a giant air pocket, air cavity, with struts and support systems all throughout this area of the skull. This skull, this is a cast, it's heavy. This bone, the bone, the real thing, would probably weigh a, would weigh a lot. It would be a very heavy piece of, piece of bone. It's thick. Very thick bone, very thick zygomatic arches, very thick animal, very thick skull, thick jaw, thick teeth. Look at the palate on this thing, it's nice and concave. The kind of processing power that those teeth had. It had these rounded canines, very large incisors, huge, just, I mean, huge. No other carnivore has carnassials of that big. Very wide skull. The zygomatic arch is just, I mean, you could see there's this giant pocket here, that's where the zygomaticus, zygomaticus muscle would have attached to down into this groove. And you can see the wear on the teeth. You look at the flatness here, flat, flat, crunch. That is all from crunching bone and the mandibular symphysis, which is basically where the mandibular, the, the two mandibles come together. Look how thick it is. Look how wide and long it is. And look how 
Look at just how thick this whole part is. An epitome of carnivore evolution. An unambiguously bone crusher. It probably was a solitary animal because as if we know, if we just look at the, the bottom jaws of this thing and compare it to the bottom jaws of the modern carnivora, there's a big difference between the carnassial tooth, the spotted hyena's gotten a much larger and much more blade-like carnassial than the dino crocuda. Look at the proportion of the teeth. Look at the shape of the jaw. It is much more like that of a brown hyena, which is solitary. And that is likely telling that dino crocuda was asocial, that it was not a gregarious animal. The context of the bones. This osteology, these animals, these bones predict about this animal's childhood. It takes a lot of time, a lot of love, a lot of motherhood, and a lot of effort to produce a tool that is so strong, so powerful, and so dense and There is no analog today that, that can do what this thing could do. First of all, because there's just no environmental conditions like this, but it's just this, the thing this size is. A rhino skull has been found with puncture wounds from one of these things. And it is likely that this animal was not only just a mega scavenger, but also a mega carnivore that went out and hunted its own food. So there's, there, there was an evidence of one that got bitten and struggled free from this mighty beast. Once you're pretty successful in your niche, and this thing was successful in its niche, its role, Nothing's stopping it from getting huge. And that's what it's gonna do. It's just... And likely when they got to a certain size, they got so big and fat and lumbering. I am here. Leave. <laughs> it would just take over. It would just take over at a carcass. But they're vulnerable. When things get specialized like this, when things get huge, when things get bulky, this is a very, very expensive metabolic machine. <clears throat> it was on a very, very tight uh, and an energetic budget. And therefore, it needed a lot of food, a lot of like big, meaty, fat, rhino, hippo, elephant type things to keep this thing going. And as soon as environments change, that means temperature, climate fluctuates. The community and plants changes. Therefore, the, the mega herbivores change. They go extinct, they leave, they are unable to reproduce. Cascade effect onto the top predators, which can't find any food, and therefore go extinct. This is the shape of bones. This is the shape of life. This shape comes directly from Earth. 